Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing another emergency challenge budget. I have $40. We're going to make about 80 meals out of it. I'm going to show you all the groceries that we got and then we're going to get started. All right, here's everything for my $40 haul that we're going to do here. A lot of this I got at a discount store. Um, some of the items were marked down. So um, I know if you go to Walmart, these are probably not going to be the prices that you are going to see, but that's what happens when you shop around and you shop your clearance racks, you shop discounts, you're going to be able to save money on your food. So let me show you kind of um, the prices that I paid. Some of these were like retail, like this was retail, but that was $1.98. And then I had this in my pantry, I haven't even used it yet, um, but I'm just probably not even going to use a quarter of this so i'm just going to put in the price of like the smaller container this is just all that i had and so the smaller container is going to be 248 so um, that's the price that i'll put in in my description box so i have those two things i have some potatoes i have three eggs i was able to go to my discount store this last week they were two dollars a dozen um so i put in the price for that uh, I found some syrup for two dollars. These were two fifty. I think these are three. Yeah, three pounds here. We're gonna use quite a quite a bit of carrots. I was able to grab this bag for four dollars at my discount store. I know regular at Walmart. I think it's like six forty something. Um, I actually found this at Walmart um, just pretty recently, actually, and I got them for a dollar each. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use two of these boxes here. Um, so uh, th those would be two dollars and then i found this 87 cents it's marked down just a little bit not a huge clearance there but um this was a dollar fifty at my discount store anything with these little stickers you're probably going to tell that i got it at my discount store a dollar fifty for some cheddar cheese this i got at a local store for 25 cents so that was a huge score. I got so many of these. Um, so hopefully this is still active. Um, oh, it says it's good until March of this year. So that's great. I got this. It's almost two back, two pounds worth for $1.50. That's a pretty decent deal. This, I didn't get discounted or anything like that. It is $2.49. Is that what that says? I'm, I think that's $2.49. I think so. Um, but that's just some Italian sausage that we're going to use. I got this Kroger um, brand. I actually got this last summer <laughs> at Kroger when I went to visit Dallas for the summer. And I really wanted to see what Kroger was all about and if they really have a lot of good deals. And they did. I grabbed like eight of these peanut butters because they were $1.25 each. Um, we're going to use up one onion. Got some rice. Got this at my discount store for $1.50. This was discounted at Walmart 301. I love, um, like, I really like Sara Lee Deli Ham, but I think this is Prima Della. Yeah, Prima Della. And so um, I'm going to make something with that. This I got at a discount store for a dollar. Some kale, which isn't really like a huge discount, honestly. But yeah, it's 14 ounces, so it's not a huge discount. And then I got this for $1.98 because I used an Ibotta rebate. And then um, for these two things, I'm just going to put in the price for a five pound bag of flour. I'm going to make some bread. I'm going to make some bread with it. So um, I'm only going to make one thing of it. Um, so there's, I think it's just fine for a five pound bag. And then I'm going to use this milk. I am going to use probably half of that, but I'll put in the price for a gallon of milk, um, which is $2.30. So um, that's everything that I got and everything that we're going to use for this haul. So let's get busy cooking. To start us off, I'm going to be making some oatmeal using these quick oats. I do cook this in water instead of milk. Most of the time I do milk, but to save money, I am just going to be using some water. I love to sweeten this with some vanilla, brown sugar. I have some salt here to give it some flavor. Um, a lot of times I'll use peanut butter. Today I'm just going to use some brown sugar. I absolutely love using brown sugar to sweeten up my oatmeal. It's just using it as a natural sweetener. 
Um, and then I add about a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to give that a good stir and just kind of let that all cook through. It doesn't take more than, you know, four or five minutes to cook this oatmeal. So I love that. It's super fast and it's very hearty. I'm also going to be making some bread that's going to help with the breakfast and it's also going to help with the dinners to make sure that we are nice and full. This recipe is a very, very basic recipe. I'm going to put in one packet of yeast. I have one cup of warm water and then I also have about three tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in. I'm going to give that a good mix and then I'm going to let that sit and get nice and foamy for about five to ten minutes. And you can also put in your uh, salt here as, if you want. Um, I'm just gonna let this rise and then I'll put in my salt and flour. You can also put in some oil or some butters, just kind of depends what you have on hand, what you have in your pantry and what you're wanting to use for this. I kind of try to keep this super low budget. So I add in just a little bit of oil and then here is my one teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. And then this recipe calls for about four and a half cups of flour. So I'm just gonna add in about half of it. And then I'll kind of add in just a little bit at a time. I don't want to put in too much flour. I don't want the flour to just go everywhere as soon as I turn on the mixer. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit at a time. And then um, if you still need more flour after you put in your four and a half cups, you can just put in a quarter of a cup at a time but it should be pretty close to four and a half cups. Okay, I kind of like mine just a teeny bit sticky, um, but you can still kind of work with it. So this is about the perfect um, stickiness that I like to have it at. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and just kind of form it and then I'm just gonna put the towel over this and let it set for about 45 minutes. I usually just like to leave it in the same bowl, that way I'm not doing more dishes. So I'm just gonna kind of form it into a bowl here um, and then I'm gonna put a towel over it. All right, now that it's been rising for about 45 minutes, you can see it's doubled in size. So I'm gonna punch it down and take it out of this bowl. And then I'm just gonna form it, work with it. I'm gonna put it in some loaf pans. I have two loaf pans. So I'm gonna divide this into two sections. That way it's able to go into two different loaf pans. And um, then I'm gonna let this rise for another 45 minutes to an hour. I want it to double in size once more, and then we will finally be able to cook it after that. I know making bread is a lot more work, but it is so much more healthier for you, so much more healthier than like sandwich bread um, that you can get in the stores. They put so much preservatives and just nasty stuff in our foods that I just really think that taking just a little bit of extra time to make something good for our family and not to mention that it is so good. My husband eats it like it's candy. He loves, loves, loves bread. Um, so here I'm just going to go ahead and put these in the loaf pants. I'm going to put a towel over it and then we're going to check back in about an hour. Okay, now it's been about 45 minutes, um, and now I'm just going to go ahead and put this in my oven. It's already been preheating, so it should be ready to go. I put this in the oven at 350. I'm going to put it in there for about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to check on it at 45 minutes because I want to make sure that it's nice and crispy on the outside, but super soft on the inside. But I've done it before where I have had um, a doughy center. So I really am super cautious about my bread and just making sure that it's in the oven long enough. This was um, had such a nice exterior crunch to it. And I just absolutely loved how easy this was to make and how simple the ingredients are. It doesn't call for buttermilk or any type of milk products, no dairy. This is just simple 
yeast, flour, and water, and it is, the bread is actually super spongy. I don't know if you can kind of tell when I'm holding it, but it's actually really spongy, so it kind of reminded me of like an English muffin type of texture. I paired ours with some crunchy peanut butter. That way it's super hearty, has lots of protein if you wanted to make this for a breakfast item. Um, one day we paired this with some oatmeal. So really, really hearty, delicious and nutritious breakfast. All right, and now I'm just gonna make some grilled cheese. So you know, I'm just gonna butter my bread. I'm gonna use this ham and then some cheddar cheese that I have. Now my cheddar cheese is like super crumbly because I think it was in the freezer um, maybe a little bit too long, I don't know. But it's really hard to take apart. So it's kind of crumbly, but it tastes the same, so I'm not really worried about it. But this was a really good lunch for me and the kids. Everyone enjoyed it. I mean, who doesn't love a good ham? and grilled cheese, super delicious. For dinner, I'm going to be preparing some chicken. I'm going to put this in the crock pot. So here I'm going to use about half of this bag. I am just going to take off all the skins. I'm going to season it with some salt and pepper. We're going to put it in the crock pot. And I am doing something that I've never done before. Um, I am going to plan on saving the bones here because I'm going to be making some broth for some future meals and um which is not something that I typically do but it made a ton of broth so I am like so excited about all the broth that it was able to make and I didn't have to go out and buy I don't even know why I've been buying broth it's so silly of me because the broth is so rich so delicious in flavor um I just really really enjoyed it so I did can quite a bit of broth that I was super excited about. So I'm just gonna go ahead and season this um, chicken with some salt and pepper. You can add in some paprika or other seasonings that you prefer. I'm just gonna do something super basic. So I'm just gonna put some water at the very bottom of my crock pot and I'm gonna put in all of my chicken quarters here. And then you can add in whatever that you have on hand. Um, I I'm just going to do chicken and and um, potatoes and carrots, but if you want to do some celery and onions to add in some extra flavor, celery is a wonderful, wonderful flavor ingredient. I put celery in my roasts all the time because it just adds such an amazing flavor. Um, at the On the top of all of this, I'm just going to go ahead and season this with some paprika and actually like a little bit of like some chicken bouillon powder, whatever you want to call it, just to kind of give it a little bit of extra flavor. I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to cook this on high for about six hours, and I will show you what it's going to look like after six hours. Y'all, this was super, super tender, super delicious. I love chicken. Like, if you can tell, it's just falling off there. It is just wrapped in so much flavor. Next, we're gonna be making some cranberry orange muffins. This is like my favorite muffin mix from Walmart. I love it. They turn out so good. And this batch turned out to be where like the outside was super crunchy and the inside was super moist. I loved, loved, loved it. I'm just making it how the, the back of the box says. So I'm gonna add in some water, an egg, and um, some oil there, give it a good mix. This mix about 18 muffins or so, and it is so good. I just, I cannot say more about this boxed uh, muffin mix. If you're gonna get a box mix, definitely get this one. It's well worth your money. 
We like to do something very, very simple on Sundays. So it's going to be like muffins or pancakes or oatmeal. It's got to be fast. It's got to be quick. And so this is just one of those days that we had some muffins. All right, now I'm going to use the rest of these like quarters. So just like before, I'm just going to take the skins all off and then I'm going to place them in the crock pot here. I'm going to season this with some um, salt and pepper as well, but I'm just going to try to layer up my crock pot here, put all the rest in there. So it's going to be pretty full. Um, I'm going to put just a little bit of water in the crock pot as well. And I'm going to let this cook on a um, low heat for about eight hours. I am just wanting everything to, I'm basically making like rotisserie style chicken here because I'm going to end up shredding it. So this is, and what's in the bowl is all the chicken that was left over from the one meal. Um, with the potatoes and carrots and now I'm going to be making some chicken pot pies so I need everything shredded is that a word yes shredded I think so um, so I'm going to shred all my chicken here and put it in this ginormous bowl I am also going to be dicing up some potatoes I'm going to put it in some boiling water um, I just want these potatoes in really small bite-sized pieces and so here I'm just going to put it in my boiling water um, I like to salt my potato water just to help it boil faster. Um, and then it should be ready in about 10 or 15 minutes. While that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and get started on my crusts. So I'm going to roll out these two pie crusts. Now, I don't know if you saw the beginning of the video, but I'm going to be using two boxes because I'm going to be making some extra um, um, pies here. So I'm going to be making the one so that we can have a lunch um, out of this. So we all had chicken pot pie for lunch. And then I'm going to be making some freezer ones because it is, my husband loves chicken pot pie. He absolutely loves it. So he likes to be able to like or grab those on a Sunday night, put it in the oven and be able to eat it after church on Sunday nights. It's like one of his go-to's. Because usually on Sunday nights, it's just whatever, leftovers, or a lot of times we'll have nachos. Just something super simple on Sunday nights. So he likes to have those ready um, that he can just grab out of the freezer and pop it in the oven. So um, to my chicken mixture, I'm actually going to be putting in two cans of cream of chicken soup. And then those potatoes should be ready by then. So I'm going to go ahead and put in all of those potatoes. And then, um, so after my potatoes are in there, then my chicken, cream of chicken soups. And then I'll put in some vegetables. I plan on putting in the whole bag of vegetables here. Um, this is like a, let me think here, an 18 ounce bag? No, I think it's a 20 ounce bag. Um, it's a it's one of the larger bags. It's not just a regular 12 to 16 ounce bag. It's a pretty big bag. So I'm just gonna decide to put the whole bag in here. I'm gonna give it a good stir. I'm also gonna put in my homemade broth that I was talking to you about earlier. Um, we're going to put that in and then I decide to put in just a little bit of milk just to give it a little bit more of a creaminess because I definitely love chicken pot pies that are super creamy. If I had more of a budget, I definitely would have added like heavy whipping cream or half and half because I really like that thick, rich, um, creamy milk products. So, but I don't really have that in my budget. So I'm just going to add the milk. I'm also gonna add in some seasonings. So I'm gonna need some oregano, some parsley, some salt and pepper, um, some thyme, some rosemary. I literally just put in all the seasonings because I need to amp this up as much as I possibly can because it's super plain. So I need to do what I can with the seasonings that I have on hand. Oh, I also put in some garlic powder. That's gonna give it a really good flavor. And then I'm going to give that a good stir and then we're ready to um, put this all in our pie crusts.
just as a disclaimer, I am not a decorator. I'm not an artist whatsoever. I have zero creative um, anything in my bones. <laughs> it's just not, not for me. So don't judge me on my pie skills there. But here are all my, I made four other freezer pies. These aren't super big. Um, they're, you can probably get two meals out of each one of these. So these are eight more meals that I was able to get out of making just a larger batch of some, um, uh, chicken pot pie. I baked this at 400 degrees for about an hour. It took forever. I felt like it took longer than what I expected it to take, but it looks gorgeous and it tasted delicious. My husband and family approved it and it um, gave it an A+. All right, for breakfast the next day, I am making some French toast and I have never made French toast like this before. Um, it was amazing, just utterly amazing. Um, so I'm just going to cut this loaf here. This is like a French loaf. I got it on discount, as you can see, for like 87 cents. Their Walmart, I got it at Walmart, and their discount bread is not as much as I think it used to be. I used to be able to get a loaf for like 50 cents, but now it's like 80 to a dollar, 80 cents to a dollar. But anyways, so I'm going to use three eggs here and just kind of crack them. I usually, when I make French toast, I put it with heavy whipping cream because like I kind of said earlier, I love like that creamy, rich texture. Um, but for budget purposes, I'm just gonna use just a little bit of milk. I'm gonna put in some vanilla and then I'm gonna put in a lot of cinnamon because cinnamon is amazing. When it comes to breakfast foods, I love cinnamon. It's gotta be a lot or I don't want it. <laughs> I'm going to carefully give this a good stir because I don't want the cinnamon to go all haywire on me uh, and give my table, my countertop, a nice dusting. So I'm going to be super careful with it and give it a good stir. And I actually need more cinnamon than that. So I just really enjoy cinnamon. Such a good flavor. Um, and then I have my big little, I don't even know what you call this, big pan here. Um, that I got for Christmas last year and I am just going to put all my French toast on here because we have kind of a large family so this is just easier for me and here is the final product of the French toast it is amazing y'all you have to try it put some powdered sugar on this put some um syrup on it and you'll be in heaven you do not need to go to you know any type of any type of restaurant because y'all this is bomb.com you're gonna love it the only thing that this needs is some eggs and bacon but sorry guys it's not in the budget so we just had french toast with this next i am going to be making some zupa to toscana toscana i don't know how to pronounce it but that's what we're making today um, I'm going to set my, um, Instant Pot to saute. I have one pound of Italian sausage that I got from a local butcher. It's actually a really good price. It's cheaper than you can get at all these or Walmart. So score on that. And I'm going to add in half of an onion that I had diced up. I'm going to go ahead and give that a good stir. I want to make sure that this is nice and ground up. You can also put in some garlic if you have that on hand. Um, if you don't, it's not a big deal. It does add such um, a good flavor to it, though. All right, this is nice and ground through. And if it doesn't have, like, a lot of grease, you know, you don't have to drain it. Mine didn't have a whole lot of grease, so I'm just going to leave it. I did cut up about four potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and put it in 
my instant pot I just put them in bite-sized pieces and then I'm going to add in my chicken broth that I made earlier you're all this is so good guys make your own chicken broth I had so many people on my channel tell me um, how to make chicken broth yourself how to can it and they were always constantly telling me to do it so guys I finally did it I finally made my own chicken broth and I'm never going back all right now that I added my chicken broth, which was four cups of chicken broth, I'm going to go ahead and set my Instant Pot to pressure cook for about 20 minutes. And those potatoes should be nice and tender after about 20 minutes. I'm going to give that a good stir and then I'm ready to add in my heavy whipping cream. I did budget um, for some heavy whipping cream, but I only budget it for this meal. So there I have about two cups of heavy whipping cream. And then here is my lovely kale that I am able to sneak in here and my family actually eat it. It's a miracle, I know. Um, but it's really good in this soup and you can't really even taste it. So I'm gonna add in about half the bag of kale and then give that a good stir. And then definitely if you have any type of like Parmesan or mozzarella Italian blend, um, it's super good in this soup. Um, I don't have it in my budget this time, but usually I do add in some Parmesan and that adds in a really good flavor as well. Just, you know me, I love cheese. Um, I'm also going to add in about two tablespoons of flour with two tablespoons of water, giving that a good stir. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my pot. Sorry, it looks so bright. I'm just I'm still trying to figure out my functions here on my camera. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm not having very good luck. I'm going to give that another good stir. I'm wanting that to thicken up, so um, that'll probably need to sit on the pot for another five or so minutes. While that's trying to thicken up, I'm going to add in some seasonings. So I have in some chili flakes. I want it to be a little spicy. So I'm going to add in just, just a hair of that. Um, any of the other type of seasonings that I'm going to use is going to be some paprika and I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I think that's all the seasonings that I use. You could definitely add in some more salt and pepper if you want. Definitely more pepper. I, I mean, y'all know I love pepper. So, um, whatever type of seasonings that y'all prefer, giving that a good stir and that's pretty much it. It's already looking a lot more thicker, so it's ready to devour. And as you can see, it's super flavorful. You can kind of see the chili peppers and then the sausage, the potatoes. Mm, so delicious, especially with that homemade bread that I made earlier. This next one that I'm going to be making is just like a sausage with some potatoes and some carrots on a sheet pan. So I'm just going to cut up my sausage here. And you don't see me cutting up my carrots and potatoes because I lost that video because y'all videoing is awesome. But I just put um, my potatoes and carrots on a pan. I seasoned it with um, just a bunch of different seasonings. Some oregano, garlic powder, salt and pepper, and then a little bit of oil. And then I baked it for about 20 minutes. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add my sausage giving that a really good stir. And then I'm gonna cook that for another 10 minutes until all of my sausage and carrots, potatoes are all nice and tender. And I cook this at 400 degrees in total. It's about 30 minutes to cook all this, but everything was so good. <clears throat> my family all loved it. It was very delicious. It was seasoned really well, had a lot of um, oil on it. So it gave it a lot of really great flavor. And so my family really liked this and we had it actually with some bread that was still left over. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found some inspiration for meals this week. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing on your way out if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one. Bye.